ile nguvu That was the latest introduction to the next chapter of Tiko Madise's storied football journey, a goal on debut for Cape Town City. The general, as Madise is known, has played for some of the biggest clubs in South Africa, including Supersport United, Orlando Pirates and Mamalodi Sundowns. It all started at Rio, Rio Stars and continued at City Pillars, a club that he actually didn't even want to go to but scored a number of times. This, as well as the promises made and believed and then broken without the acknowledgement that they were ever made in the first place, are revealed in the memoir, The Curse of Teco Medice, written by Nicholas Kirkinos. The general himself joins us to chat to us about his book and the journey that still continues. A very good morning and welcome to Morning Live. No, thank you very much for having me. Uh, okay, so let's begin. Why The Curse? Many people will look at your journey and say that you've achieved things that other players have never, right. ever achieved in South Africa. So why is your, why is your story a curse? I think um, uh, half of my career, um, there was a stigma about me that, um, that I'll never win anything. And at some point I was called that like, um, I was a curse of the teams because every team that I moved from, they started winning things. So, so that on its own also played a part for me to call the book The Curse. There's a lot written in here, yeah. and some some very very uh, eyebrow raising things that were written in here. Mm -hmm. What do you stand by everything that's in this book? Yeah. Why did you choose Nicholas to to write this book for you? I mean, um, I've I've known Nicholas for for a while, and uh, at the time I think he was working for Sokala Duma. And um, he's been telling me that he wants to write my book, the day that I decided to write my book, and then he wants to write it. And, uh, of course, I met with a couple of writers as well, but I didn't like the way that they wanted to write my book. So, so I remembered Nicola's words. So I reached out to him, and then, uh, and then we started writing a book. That was like uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, why the book and why now? I think um, at this, I'm at the stage of my career where um, I think I owe so many things to, to football and I think um, so many stories have been told about me, but I haven't actually had time to actually address certain issues. So I think it was a good time for me to actually address those issues while I'm still playing football. I mentioned in the intro that you played for City Pillars and it was a team that you actually yeah, didn't yeah. want to go to in yeah. the first place. Do you want to share that story with us? Yeah, I mean, uh, when Riestas was sold, because at the time there was 18 teams uh, on the PSO and then they wanted to cut down to 16. So when Riestas was sold, uh, I was promised that I would, I would go to Ajax Cape Town. So um, at the time there was reshuffling of players and most of the players that were playing for Riestas went to London Pirates. So I never got a call. Um, not, uh, I didn't know also what, what, uh, what team I'm going to play for, so I tried to call Ria a couple of times, I didn't pick up my calls, and uh, only to find out that, that uh, half of the team that was uh, at Ria Stars are playing for City Pillars at the time, so they're actually waiting for me, Ria Stars, Ria sold my, my clearance to, to that team, so that's the team that actually I didn't want to play for, and I, and I ended up playing for that team for four years. And you made the best of it yeah, yeah, before yeah. going to Supersport United. Yeah, yeah. I think um, um, they prepared me very well. I mean, um, they gave me exactly what I needed because I needed to. I needed game time at the time because at Real Stars I only played eight games in the league, so I wanted to have more experience and, and more game time for me to actually grow and mature as a player. And they actually gave me that opportunity. And then the same thing was going to happen to you when your clearance was sold to Jomo Cosmos. Yeah. I think it's, it's this thing of people selling my clearance to, to different teams. I mean, also from, from City Pillars, um, I think at the time, um, 16 teams in the PSL, they wanted me because I've just won the player of the year in Vela League. So I was trying to decide which team to, uh, I need to go to because I was negotiating with so many teams as well. At the time, Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs also came to my house. So I was trying to decide which team to play for and uh, only to find out also that my clearance has been sold to Jomo. And uh, I needed to, I also met uh, Jomo, Jomo Son and, and um, he actually told me, like, what made it comfortable for me, because he told me that I'm not this type of a player, but he'll sign me nonetheless. And uh, the salary that he wanted to give me, it was, it was ridiculous. So I, I thought I, I'm, I'll never play for Cosmos again. And I remembered that Pizzo also wanted uh, me to come and play for Supersport. And then it was easy for me to go to Supersport since I've known Pizzo. Because when I was 19, he used to come and pick me up for, for, for a training session. So it was easy for me because I didn't want to disappoint him for, for the second time. But your relationship with Pizzo deteriorated 
you're with him at Super Sports, yeah. and then you speak about the deterioration while you were at Klerkop with Mamalodi Sundowns. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, um, when he came through, because at the time uh, when he was still at Bafana, and I was still also involved in Bafana, Bafana, he used to ask me so much about the team. And uh, I knew then that he, he wanted to come and coach Sundowns. And then when he did, I was happy that uh, at least now there will be a person that is knowledgeable about the game and it will help us win in trophies because at the time Sundowns like, went like eight, seven years without winning anything. And then when he came there, the first thing that he did, he, he, he told me that I'm not going to be the captain anymore. I wasn't, it wasn't a problem, it wasn't an issue for me. But then um, knowing him as a coach and knowing him that he's coached me so, for so many years, I expected him to, to understand me more better and then, and then just the, the relationship between me and him it started being bad and then and at the time I was still a Mamelodi Little Sundance player and then I had to be professional about it and, 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 and take it. There are so many stories in this book and certainly not enough time for us to do it in five minutes yeah. to go through all the stories and all of the things that are revealed in the book. The Curse of Teko Madise, which uh, was uh, this past week released. Stories about the teams that he's been with, the coaches that he's been under, as well as some very personal accounts from your personal life with your yeah. ex-wife and the mother of your daughter. So thank you very much for coming to studio thank and chatting to us. That's the new book, The Curse of Eteko Medise, as he continues with his career and hopes to share some knowledge and some of his stories that can help enlighten some of the young footballers that also want to become a professional. Stay with Morning Live. More coming up after the break.